Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Inspirational Wednesdays. Today is Wednesday, February the 19th, 2014. My name is Pastor Al Kennan III, and it is our privilege, it's our pleasure to be here today to serve as your facilitator, to serve as, 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 as your servant here this morning as we petition God through prayer, praise, and devotion, as we worship him, as we come before the throne, as we seek him uh, and his divine grace, his divine mercy, his awesome power, his divine might in our lives and the lives of others. You know, I say it all the time. Uh, how many other gods in other religions allowed their uh, practitioners, allowed their followers, allowed their children to have immediate, instant, constant access with their deity, their their God, like our God does. I don't know any God that does like our God who lets us come before the throne. We don't need any intermediaries. We don't need any go-betweens. He says, bring what you have. Bring what's on your heart, what's on your mind to the throne. Give it to me. Let me have it, and I'll deal with it. I don't know of any other God that does that but our God. So since our God has been so good to us to give us free access to his grace, to his mercy, to his provision, to his protection, to his perfection, and to his kindness, and to his patience, and to all those wonderful characteristics that we ascribe to our God, since he's given us instant free immediate access to those things why not we why not take advantage of that why not actually come before god for the throne why not actually come to the throne why not come before god and say god this is what's on my heart and mind this is what i'm wrestling with this is what i'm going through this is the weight i'm bearing this is the hurdle i have to jump over this is a mountain i have to climb this is a setback i had to rebound from this is the predicament that's holding me down this is a tribulation that's keeping me back and god i need you to move on my behalf, or God, I need you to move on the behalf of someone that's important to me, someone that I care about, someone that I love. Why not take advantage of this time, of this opportunity to put your cares, your concerns before the Lord, our God, knowing by faith that he will actually do what it is that he said that he will do. All right. Amen. So with that said, we're not going to tarry. We're going to get right into this call. We're going to take full advantage because I know today, someone today is going to be blessed because we're going to talk about, we're going to pray about, we're going to uh, wrestle with something that someone is going through today and God is going to provide an answer for you so that you may uh, be able to be the best disciple. The best disciple, the best steward, the best servant God is calling you to be. Let us have our opening morning prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we come to you right now, God, seeking your continual presence, seeking your continual guidance, seeking your continual nurturing, seeking your continual nourishment, seeking your continual perfection and protection. Because God, there's no place else we can go where we are provided for. We are cared for. We are, we are nurtured as you do for us. So God, right now we ask that in this moment, you will let your Holy Spirit be present among us. Let it dwell. Let it tabernacle. Let it inhabit this call. Let it be present around this virtual altar as we lift our prayers to you, God. By faith, God, we claim that not only are you, will you hear our prayers, but you will be certain to answer our prayers and to move on our behalf and on the behalf of those persons that we intercede on, seed for. Now, God, bless us, keep us, and never leave us. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. The scriptorial focus for this morning's devotional comes from the Gospel of John the ninth chapter, the first through 11th verses. That's John chapter 9, verses 1 
through 11. I will read from the New International Version of the Scripture. The Word of God is as follows. As he went along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he, said, but he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Thus far, the word of God. The title for this morning's devotional is, It's a Setup. It's a Setup. How many times have we stood in the mirror looking at our own reflections, staring back at us, and thought out loud, where do I go from here? What do I do now? I'm literally at wit's end. I'm done, I've done all that I know to do. There's nothing else that I can do. There's nothing else I can even think of. How do I overcome these issues that keep knocking me further and further down? Many of us have had this conversation with the man or woman in the mirror. And each time we've had this conversation, the person staring back at us provided us with absolutely no answers or solutions. He or she looked back at us with no compassion, sympathy, or understanding. The truth is that we've all walked away from these mirror conversations feeling worse than we did before we initiated them. That's how life feels a lot of time. It has us knotted up, twisted up, and messed up so bad that we literally feel as if there's no way to go from here but down. There's no escape from our present predicaments. There's no relief from our current tribulations. This problem, whatever it is, has tormented us so bad that there's no plan of action, no solution, no answer, and no recourse that leads to a brighter day. Where do we go from here? What do we do now? These, my brothers and sisters, are indeed the questions standing directly on our necks wearing steel toe work boots. What if I told us that where we are currently isn't by accident? that what we find ourselves wrestling with and fighting against is by design. It's on purpose. It's not a mistake. As hard as it is to believe, the truth is that quite often God himself orchestrates the very predicaments and tribulations that give us the most fit. I know that we normally blame anything and everything negative, painful, and hurtful on the devil. But many times, Satan can't take credit for the hell we're catching. He ain't that powerful. If we think it through logically, anyone that has to ask the Lord for permission to do anything isn't really that big of a threat. No, many times, the problems and issues we're unable to resolve or handle come directly from the Lord. Why? Why would the Lord God Almighty be so cruel to us? Why would the Redeemer of our souls and the Sustainer of our faith treat us so meanly and unlovingly? Why? It doesn't make any sense. This isn't the God we learned about as children in Sunday school, is it? I was talking with my brother this week, and this very issue came up during our discussion. He felt as if there was nothing else he could do, nor was there anywhere he could go. 
He had done all that he knew how to do, and that still didn't change the parameters of his present predicament. He remained trapped within the same situation that was unmercifully dragging him beneath the surface without any real hope of escape. He wanted a credible expectation of lifting himself out of his current tribulation. But as he assessed the instant situation, it seemed that there was no reason for him to expect anything to change. In his words, there was nothing else he could do, nothing else he knew how to do that would change his instant reality. As I was doing my best to minister to and encourage my brother, God spoke to me. He said that many times he's intentionally allowed certain tribulations and predicaments to arise in our lives that he knows full well that we can't overcome, more or less, even address. And he does this not because he wants to be mean and cruel to us. No, the Lord allows trouble to hound and dog us so that he can display his awesome glory in our lives. The Lord wants us to know that there are just some things that only he can handle. There are just some problems that only he can solve. There are just some tribulations that only he can overcome. And the only way that he can make this point plain is when he allows some things in our lives to get to the point where all we can say is, where do I go from here? What do I do now? In our scripture this morning, there's a man who was born blind. There never was a day in his life that he could perceive his surrounding environment visually. All he could see was the blackness, or more, or more appropriately, the nothingness. If there was one thing about this man that had never changed during his entire life, it was his blindness. Think we're having a bad day? Consider this fact. No matter how bad or difficult it gets for us, we can still see. I think we will all agree that if there was ever a problem that is beyond human ability to solve, blindness would fit the bill. Virtually everyone born blind dies blind. But in our scripture, this blind man had the godly fortune of encountering Jesus. And when he does, we learn that the reason why this man has been blind all of his life was so that at that very moment, God could show himself strong and mighty. Now, the assumption surrounding this brother was that his blindness was the direct result of sin. Either he or his parents had committed some sin or group of sins. And as punishment, the Lord forced this man to live his life as a blind person. Exodus chapter 34 verses 6 and 7 declare, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to two thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. You see, in Hebrew thought, anyone who sinned, not sin not against himself or his neighbor. Rather, he sinned against the Lord God Almighty. And the punishment for sinning against God wasn't imposed just against the offender. It was also inflicted on the, uh, the offender's descendants. Thus, any person born with mental and or physical defects was considered a sinner and thus under the judgment of the Lord. They were forbidden from living within the city limits of any Hebrew town, and they were especially precluded from participating in any spiritual event or activity because they were considered spiritually unclean. Therefore, when the disciples realized that the man Jesus was interacting with was blind, they automatically assumed that he was suffering God's wrath for sinning. But Jesus immediately clarified that neither this man nor his parents has sinned. Rather, his blindness was a setup for God to manifest his glory. Someone here today is thinking like the disciples, though. We believe that the only reason why we're catching hell is because we've done something wrong. 
Somehow and some way, we've sinned against the Lord above, and now he's taking retribution against us. Wrong. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Wrong. Hey, how are you? Fine, fine. Uh, the, thank you for calling. We're in, we're, we're, we're in the middle of receiving our devotional. We're getting ready to start our, um, our, our, prayer, our prayer portion of the call in just one second when we finish our devotional, okay? Okay. It, where we are currently is precisely because God is up to something. He's about to do something amazing in our lives that's going to blow our minds. Whatever he's about to do is so much bigger than anything else that's ever happened in our lives. In fact, this thing is so big that it's going to blow the socks off of our neighbors. It's not only going to change the parameters of our lives, it's going to transform our neighbors into believers in Christ. When Jesus enabled the blind man to see, this miracle touched the lives of the people who lived amongst him. Imagine how the lives of those persons around us will change once God does what only he can do in our lives. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we can't see. No, more, more accurately, we can't see properly. The only thing we do see when we run into a problem bigger than us is how much we can't overcome it. We only see our demise. We only notice how close the end is to us. We only perceive that the danger involved is too real and we're too underpowered and under-equipped to survive it. But Lord, we need God vision. We need the ability to see things as you see them. Quite often, our predicaments and tribulations are merely setups. They're the opportunities you created for yourself to do what only you can do so that we may understand just how glorious you really are. Help us to get excited every time we encounter a hurdle too high for us to jump over. Enable us to become emboldened in faith every time we come to a chasm too wide for us to leap across. Empower us with unconquerable joy every time we come to a mountain too high for us to climb over. Let us know that we're on the verge of a setup and that you're about to do something big in our lives. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. We have just had our morning devotional and... I am praying and praising God that as we go through today, we will realize that each and every hurdle we encounter, each and every mountain that uh, confronts us, each and every problem that arises today is a setup from God. He's trying to create the environment for him to do the impossible in our lives so that he may show himself alive, mighty, and powerful in the midst of everything going on. You know, when we are going through what we're going through, so many times we're fighting, trying to stay alive, thinking that if we don't keep wading in the water, and wading, I mean W-A-D-I-N-G, not W-A-I-T-I-N-G, wading in the water, if we don't wade, we'll sink. We forget that God has taken the obligation of making sure we don't drown. And that what we have to remember is he has allowed this situation to arise because there's something that we need to see. And there's something that our neighbors need to see. And the only way that we and our neighbors will fully understand just who God is, is if there's something that has arisen in our lives that is beyond our ability to handle. You know, when, we, when I was working on this devotional, I said, God, I really want to bite on and wrestle with the whole part of whatever we deal with is not because we sin. And God said, you have a time limit. Let me deal with it. And so God said, I'm going to deal with it right now. Too many times we think that what we're dealing with is the crop of our actions. And sometimes what, we deal, what we're dealing with is the crops of our action. But the truth is the word tells us that the wages of our sin is death. So if God was truly going to allow us to have to deal with the crops of our action, every, every one of us would be dead. But since we're not dead, since he's given us and forgiven us uh, uh, of our sins and, get, and allowed us to wake up this morning, what we're dealing with isn't necessarily because we've done something wrong. Rather, what we're dealing with, we're dealing with uh, the, the infinite wisdom, the infinite will of God. 
And so what we have to do is get out of our minds that the hell we're catching is because we've been so bad that we've been so evil. The hell we're catching is because God is about to do something awesome. So I tell you, uh, we were talking about it this past Sunday uh, during service. Every time a problem arises, we ought to start getting excited. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's like as a small child on Christmas Eve, the closer and closer it got to bedtime, we all got excited because guess what? We knew that when we wake up, when we will wake up the next morning, it would be Christmas. Santa Claus would have come and we would have been blessed with whatever toy Santa Claus is going to bring us. Every time a problem, every time an issue, every time a, a tribulation, every time a per predicament arises, we ought to and get excited because we know our God is literally on the verge of doing the impossible in our life. He's about to bless us. He's about to elevate us and he's about to change the circumstances and the parameters of our lives in such a way that not only will we be astounded, but people around us will be encouraged to come into a faithful relationship with God. Amen. I got to stop because I feel myself getting ready to start preaching here and I promise everyone that this call would not be in preaching engagement. This will be a prayer conference call. And so with that said, we're going to transition. We're going to move right into our the prayer section of our call. And I want my all the everyone here to know that there is absolutely nothing that you're going through there's nothing that you're dealing with there's nothing on your heart on your mind that is beyond prayer it doesn't matter if you think what you're dealing with is too big too important to, to uh, or too small there's in God's eyes Anything worth praying about is important to him. So what I want us to do, I want us to take full advantage of this call. I want us to be able to jump into this call, to trust this, this scripture that says where two or more are gathered in his name, there shall he also be. Please know that you've got your prayer warrior standing here, sitting here on this call with you, ready to intercede with you, ready to go with you uh, to a place of prayer, a place of uh, of tabernacling with, with, with God and, and so that you can raise the prayer request that you have knowing by faith that is getting to God. God is hearing it and God has already started moving on our behalf. So this is what I want us to do. If you have a prayer request, a praise report, or even a prayer that you yourself would like to pray, I want you to jump in, give us your name, where are you calling from, and we'll go from there. If you are afraid that someone um, may uh, be uh, may may recognize who you are or recognize who you are about what what you're about to pray about, you don't have to tell us your name. Just tell us what it is you want us to pray for for you, and we'll go from there. All right. So let's let's get started. You know.